All right. Well, we've uh, we've covered our our two kind of leave early from school guys here with with Carry On Johnson and Rojo as being juniors, and let's get on to a couple of senior guys. Uh, we got Royce Freeman here, and we're going to finish up with with Penny. Uh, obviously, Freeman came back after a sixteen that was probably a little disappointing, which kind of caused him to come back. Um, what do you, what do you got? Yeah, I mean, he definitely had a down sixteen as far as the overall numbers go. He he injured his ankle. Uh, in week four versus Nebraska, missed, or I think that was week three versus Nebraska, he missed weeks four and five, uh, returned to play Washington State, had a had a solid game, 19 carries for 138 yards and three touchdowns. Um, the following week versus Washington, he bruises his sternum, and for the next four weeks, it's a terrible set of four weeks that everybody likes to point to. Um, I think he had, let's see, he had, I don't know exactly how many yards he ha- or how many rushes he had, but it was 136 yards combined over four weeks. And at the end of that four-game stretch, he gets benched for what was I read as effort and attitude issues. Um, he was asked about it after the game uh, about being demoted to second string, and he simply gave the other running back credit and yeah. said he needs to step up his own game, which uh, is is great to hear. Not not throwing shade anywhere, just basically kind of lifting up his other guy, which is right. And then he finished 16 with 300 plus yard games. Uh, he finished the season strong, but it, overall it was it was a down year in, for him. And so I guess it was bad enough. He decided to come back for his senior year at Oregon. They had a coaching change overhaul. They put an emphasis on the, in, getting getting that offensive line in the weight room. Um, I read a lot about how that you know that offensive line basically just tried to put on a bunch of weight. And, and yeah. they, they got their left tackle back, who was missed. I think it's Crosby was his name. He had missed a bunch of time in 16 with a foot injury. Um, they brought in some competition through recruiting. And it wasn't the best offensive line in the nation by any means, but it was definitely an improvement. And uh, and then you come you see you see Royce come back in 17 yeah. and stay healthy for the most part and, and, and crush it. Well, you heard a lot, a lot to be made of in that 16 season once Willie Taggart came over from South Florida about the strength and conditioning of that program was terrible mm-hmm. through that coaching change and all that and then you saw a little bit of a resurgence of Royce in 17 but 14 Royce looked great 15 Royce looked real strong um this guy's been pretty solid touchdown wise pretty solid you know average yards kind of wise this is a really talented player um kind of projected maybe day two through day four right now um yeah so interesting guy big back 230 yeah, 230 doesn't quite look 230 um i guess i want to take it back real quick to that the game versus arizona state in in uh in 2016 this is the third game in that four game stretch where he got benched mm-hmm. um right he got benched the next game um, and I looked at that game, and, and the stat line wasn't great. It was 17 rushes for 38 yards, but I, I didn't even look at the stat line before watching the game, and you would have never guessed it was that little yards because he right. had several big big runs where he got 10 or 11 yards um, and, and was moving the chains for his squad. But then, I mean, that he was getting blown up behind the line of scrimmage. Like, I don't know what you're really supposed to do when you're getting that you know, when you have no room to run whatsoever, a yeah. lot of, you know, it's so many things have to go right for, for you, a good run. You can't run. create when guys are in the back, three yards in the backfield, you know, every other play. Right. And then he had, a, he had a catch on a screen play and he almost popped that off for a big play, but it was just like barely a shoestring tackle. The that got back him of the heel swipe. Just barely. So it only went for nine yards. Um, but I mean, and and then he he did have a dirty touchdown run at the, at the end, at of, the that end of that game. game yeah. Um, so like I didn't, nothing in that game, warranted me thinking him getting benched right but you know the other guy i guess they thought was was playing a little bit better and like you said he was dealing with that sternum injury and ha- had a, a lower body injury earlier in the year so wasn't completely healthy all 15 comes back si- in 17 wasn't and, completely healthy all 16. sorry 16 comes back in 17 um they actually had him in the locker room like in the offensive line meetings they put him in there with the o-line to learn about Scheme, blocking better, schemes right and all pass that. protection and they have some they got some scheming, b- blocking schemes, man. Where they, they got that interior of that line is really good at pulling any which way right. direction and getting into that second level. And and any time they were able to do that, yeah, he busts off a big run. So you were coming from that kind of Chip Kelly school of, of Oregon for a while, and then in, in fourteen he still had Mariota there, and then you've had you know a bevy of quarterbacks that obviously aren't Marcus Mariota there, and Oregon as a program kind of declined from there. They yeah. were, you know, but still Royce did his thing in uh pretty much every year that he was there in 16 being the down year 17 i thought was everything that's on tape is is 
pretty solid. Absolutely, uh, I think he's I think he's solid in the receiving game. He had uh, seventy nine receptions over the course of his yeah. career. I saw him lined up wide a couple times, catch a comeback route. You know, and not a ton of pass blocking on film, really. It doesn't stay back there too much. Not too much, but it, it it was pretty good. I mean, he 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 whiffed a couple times, just like everybody does. Um, but for the most part, I didn't see it as a as a lack of a you know. I definitely didn't see it as a knock on him. Yeah. Um. Well, and, he ends his career as being second in Pac-12 in scrimmage yards all time. Um, solid. Seventh in in yards in NCAA for career, I believe for run, for the running back. Um, I think your biggest takeaway from when you watch everything from from Royce Freeman and all that kind of stuff and and you hear the announcers say it pretty much every game that you watch from him is how outstanding this guy's vision is Mm -hmm. and you can usually take what the announcers are kind of saying with a grain of salt but in this case this is probably his best feature like this guy's vision is second to none this boy's got that rock solid 2020 yeah no LASIK necessary yeah maybe Um, 2015 yeah um but I he, you know, kind of follows his blocks well, which kind of tends to lead lend to that kind of vision thing. Sure. Um, Definitely, I saw that fault using that's a note I got here. Uses his blocks well, but he can create on his own right. sometimes. Which is a, which is you know you you sometimes you kind of get either or with right. that with right. that kind of player. But and he's he, not he's the got biggest tackle breaking dude. He doesn't break like a ton of tackles. No, but he does break some. And and we were kind of talking about it off air about how. I think you mentioned maybe he's like he looks like a power back, but he doesn't really well, yeah. power it. He's not super. So I have banger. him. I have him kind of labeled as the non power back power back, if that makes sense. Yeah. He's like he's got a big frame and whatnot. And and my biggest my biggest thing with that was is like a lot. So there was times not not all the time, but it's just not consistent enough where he kind of stays straight up and down near the line of scrimmage. And doesn't like you would like to see a two thirty guy get get that pad level lower, like we were just talking about with Ronald Jones, how he's really good at using that pad level at getting low and using leverage. Yeah. Well, Royce doesn't really do that all the time. Like near the goal line, he seems to be pretty decent with it, and he's awesome at it in the second level for whatever reason. Yeah. But in that coming off the line of scrimmage, um, there's just sometimes where it seems like he just got tackled too easily where it was like you'd like to see a 230 guy even if there's nothing there to just put that head down and bang into somebody yeah and and i don't think you see that enough there's times where you do right right and definitely in the red zone he's money in those short yardage you know he had 60 touchdowns that's that's a freaking number there right but i mean again then at the second level what you usually see is is like i don't know what it is i'm sure there's some sort of word for it this isn't my job i don't do this for a living yeah um i would like to but yeah We'll see how that Hit us goes up on Patreon, right? But <laughs> at the second level, he usually like he finishes his runs pretty strong when he gets to that second level, and and then when he's kind of in that crease in the second level and and getting upfield, like you just see body parts kind of flying out of those creases where nobody can get a hold of him because he's running hard. That pad level's a little lower, and which which then leads to like a, another big chunk of yards after he gets to that second level, which is really what you want from your guy, but you what. You really want is to that for that to always be consistent, right? Of especially from a two thirty yeah. uh, kind of back here, you know, and, and sometimes you do see it, but it's just not consistent, like you said. Yeah, yeah. For the most part, feet are pretty agile, and he's got deceptive speed. Like absolutely, he's legitimately People outrunning will peg him some for guys. being slow, but I don't, I don't think he's slow. He was outrunning dudes, right? I mean, not everybody, but he was definitely outrunning. He's not lightning fair, fast, right? Big black cats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I would like to see a little bit more physicality on a consistent basis, I guess, for yeah. for his frame. Right, but but, but for the but most good part, speed for a, for a bigger back, and and like you said, I do believe he he creates on his own many times. Um, and I, another thing, when you when he's kind of getting up into that second level and, and making moves, like not a ton of wasted movements on his jukes, like his cuts and his jukes are, are pretty decisive mm-hmm. and usually stay kind of towards getting upfield. He doesn't really move left to right, like try to like dance, run uh, east and west when he's trying to get upfield, and it usually works out for him. But I, um, I do. I can't recall him going east to west and getting the edge right. on people. Yeah, yeah. You know, so like he can, 
But that's not, you know, he's not trying to do that every time. But uh, but a thing I like in, in a lot of backs is, is when you don't spend a lot of time east and west because at the next level, it's typically going to get you in trouble. And right. when you can see them not relying on that at this level right. is is like Marlon is solid. Mack. Right. Like Marlon Mack relied on that east to west ability and then got into the pros and couldn't pass protect well and never saw the field that much. See, I mean, he saw the field and he had times where he looked really good. Outside. Outside, but... Yeah, well, Marlon lacks another discussion for another time. We love time. Marlon Mack, but he just got so hot there last summer for a second. We <laughs> had to be like, settle down. Given given some more Marlon Mack, uh, yeah, it's just, air time it Sounds here. like we hate him, but we don't. We I, like him a I lot. Really we like just him. Didn't want to draft him at the top of the second round or anything like that. So we ended up kind of both of us agreeing that we had Royce Freeman ahead of the last guy that we're going to talk about today in in Rashad Penny, which a lot of people really like Rashad Penny. He's he's also a lot of big backs in this draft. Yeah, like bigger kind of prototypical uh, big backs that don't maybe play as big as they should, right? But catch the ball pretty well. So like a guy, a, like basically like last year, Chris Carson was a guy for me who who really stood out and didn't get a ton of love, um, and he kind of had this finesse running style about him, and then he kind of through his younger years in college. And then he kind of switched to a little bit more of a bruising mm -hmm. kind of power style back. And, and then he had kind of all the facets of the game covered. And this is what I would like to see kind of Royce Freeman and Rashad Penny kind of pick up and, and, and learn how to do not that Freeman. I like Freeman's uh, running style a little bit more than I like Penny's running style, but I would like to see him get a little more vicious and have that carry on Johnson mentality about himself where, you know, Vicious. Yeah. I like right. that. <laughs> I like that. All right. Well, uh, that'll do it for Royce Freeman. Let's go ahead and take a quick short bathroom break, and we'll be back to uh, break down a little Rashad Copper Penny for your pleasure.